make this beautiful twisted brioche slouchy tam today at good knit kisses we are going to make this wonderful tam hat it is soft and squishy in a brioche with the two color design in fact it's actually reversible and you get these striped brioche here without the cable twist on the inside you can add something like a pom-pom or a felted button or ra yarn wrapped button or just simply leave on this beautiful side with all these twisted cables in your brioche. We're going to make that today on Good Knit Kisses. Know that this is an intermediate pattern. I will walk through the entire pattern with you. We have it detailed in our blog link and you can also get that on Ravelry and Etsy. All right, join me and we'll go right through the pattern. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. A couple of things about this video. I am showing it working in a counterclockwise manner. So we're going to be going in this direction. Now, if you are watching the clockwise video, it's going to go in the opposite direction. I do not have this portion of the video flipped, but in the areas where we are not showing writing on the screen, I will flip the video for uh, the one going in the clockwise fashion. The pattern is written for counterclockwise. And the reason why I'm um, spelling it out right now is because there's a section where uh, we're going to say, instead of going to peg one or two, which you can work in this direction, which is to the right, or in this direction is to the left, um, I have a a word that says we're working in a pair where we say go to the right or go to the left. But if you are working uh, in the clockwise version, just do what I do visibly, what you can see me visually do with my hands. Uh, and if I say right, you're going to go left and vice versa. That's the only section where it really changes. And uh, on the right-handed one, or the one that I'm doing where it's counterclockwise, you're just going to notice that all of your cables go to the right. And if you do it on the other one, all the cables will go to the left, like this sample right here. Okay, notice how these lean to the other side. All right, so let's go over the supplies. For supplies, you're going to need to get the pattern, which is down in the link below at our blog. Just open up the video description and click on that link. You can read it from the blog, or yes, you can purchase a PDF ad-free pattern if that's what you'd like to do. I'm gonna set this aside. We're gonna go over some of the supplies here that I can point out to you, and then we'll go through the pattern first before beginning. So be sure and click down in the video description below, and you can click on the timestamps individually, or the video may have chapter buttons and you can just jump to the section that you want. Again, this is an intermediate pattern. I am gonna have things a little bit faster than usual, but if I have uh, sections, I'll point them out later that I have a slower version. If in those sections I have a better version that's slower for beginners, you can click in the um, video description to find that information. So we have our rotating double knit loom. This is from Knitting Board or KBLooms.com. It's the only one of its kind. It has an outside loom and an inside loom and it rotates it has 52 pegs on each loom and the way the brioche works it's like it doubles the amount of pegs it ends up making it like you're having working with 104 stitches at a time don't worry about that part but if you did buy the topper the one that has about eight more pegs to it, it has 60 pegs it's kind of a um, triangle shape sort of uh, you'll make a much bigger hat and this one already makes a very generous size hat for fitting Really all adults, even a very large head, it will fit. So if you wanna do the topper, be my guess, but I don't think you're gonna need it. It might be way too big for you. So just a little tip. Uh, you're going to need two colors of yarn. This is just a medium four weight yarn, worsted weight. Uh, we're working with two colors. I have uh, Premier Everyday Soft Worsted in color glass, which is a light gray. And then we have the really red color. You just need one ball of each. You don't need a measuring tape, but you do need a row counter, and I'm just going to have this off to the side. But my quick tip is, after you get cast on and you get the first setup, which you'll see later, go ahead and click when you start your round one. When you're finished with a round, go ahead and click that you're done with that, so that if you set down your project and set down your, your uh, little... Uh, row counter, then you'll see what row that you're supposed to be currently on. It just makes it less confusing. So there's that. You're also going to need a tapestry needle for weaving in ends later. Plus, of course, your scissors. You're going to need a crochet hook for much later um, in the very end for finishing. And of course, your loom tool. And then we do work with anchor yarn when we double knit. So just a contrasting uh, colored yarn. 
that's a couple of yards. Okay, those are your plies. Let's jump into the pattern. All right, we've got our pattern, and here's my sample hat. If you are a beginner, or what you describe as uh, you do easy or easy plus patterns, and you want to attempt the cable, I'm excited for you. Everything is written out with very few abbreviations, and we tried to go very detailed for you. Uh, however, if you decide you don't want to do the cables, but you just want to do a brioche hat, uh, know that you can work your uh, ribbing with us, and I'll start you off on the brioche, and then you can just work the number of rounds that are indicated in here just straightforward as the brioche without actually moving any cables and then work up until the uh, crown area up here and then just follow the instructions for finishing so that should work out really well for you and if you are an intermediate and you want to just test it out you can make both hats whichever you'd like <laughs> okay so let's walk uh, visually through this hat so uh, you are going to have a stockinette cast on you're going to move your stitches uh, inside for this uh, chunky open rib stitch and then you move them back out uh, and work your first part of your brioche where it just goes open like this okay and then you're going to um, put pairs of stitches together so you had pairs of stitches that had gone together here and then they opened up and then now it shifts over by one. So you have a pair here and then you have a pair here. So one of these uh, pairs of pegs was being used on this side and then you're using one next to it. So um, anyway, you'll understand what I mean later on, but it makes the cable here. So we have to um, work our round of stockinette in the A first uh, for the to set up the brioche and then knit over. And then we actually have to uh, move those stitches to twist them just like you would a cable but you actually need to do it after you've already wrapped and knit over and then we have a special wrapping technique for the um, the opposite color that appears on the back side so on the inside nothing gets twisted so the inside loom part doesn't get uh, moved or twisted until much later on when we're on the uh, top part okay but you have to um, have this special wrapping technique so that it looks right on the outside so um, you'll set up A and then you'll also do B and then you'll continue in your stocking net. So uh, in the stocking net, the brioche. So these long sections in between are done identical. It's just that when you get to this middle part here on these, we have to slightly adjust them. So we have a brioche section one that covers this part. And then we have a brioche two that covers this part. And then we go back to one over here for this part, but we're spelling each section out with all of the rounds uh, numbered so you can just tick them off on your page or using your uh, row counter uh, in whatever way you like so uh, and then we'll have the shaping of the top or the crown later on so that's the basic setup uh, let's go through this here just so you see what this is all about so we've got our supplies we already went through and noting again we're working counterclockwise this direction all the instructions are written for that and uh, this is just outlining the written instructions very detailed if you want them for the chunky open rib stitch and then we go into our uh, first part here this these instructions it's got the hat brim and then the first several rounds of brioche if you're doing the plain more plain hat you can follow this part and then just continue following all the rounds just um, straight up until you get to that length. And then, then here's the tw cable twist brioche one starts on peg two where we're adjusting it over. And then we've got them all written out and I'll go over those on screen with you. And then it jumps over to cable twist brioche two starts on peg one. So you see it's now it's moving back over and then uh, that's all on one page come over to the next page and it says cable twist brioche one starts on peg two and it jumps over again and that's not a typo we've gone ahead and typed out all the instructions using all of the new round numbers so you can stay on those individual pages if you're looking on the PDF or if you're on the blog you just continue scrolling you don't have to keep jumping back up very far so they're all written out for you and then the last couple pages is just on shaping the top so that's how that is. I'm going to refer to it off of the side. Let's dive in on casting on. 
All right, let's begin. Go ahead and put your stitch markers on if you want to. I'm just putting one around peg one to indicate my starter peg. It's just kind of hard to see that arrow, so I like to start that way. And then I've got a stitch marker around pegs two and three because they're going to be used as a pair at some point in the pattern. It's just a good indicator. And I like it in a different color so I can uh, notice them. Then I have a third stitch marker and I'm gonna put it around uh, pegs one and two as my other pair. So you're gonna notice these are gonna come in handy for the brioche um, twisted sections, the cabled part of the brioche. So just twist those around or use your loom tool and you are ready to go. Grab your yarn. This is color A. I'm using a gray color. Go ahead and make your slip knot. Place that on peg one. And we're gonna do our stock and neck cast on. We're gonna put it on peg one on the outside and then we go to the inside loom, peg one, come down, go around the outside of peg two, go back and pick up peg two on the inside loom and keep going. Don't twist your stitches, just continue in the stockinette. All right, pause your video and I'll see you in a moment. Or you can keep going and pick up a second round because we're just gonna do two rounds of this and put in your anchor yarn. If you already know how to do that, uh, just go ahead and I'll show that in a moment. See you soon. Okay, go ahead and push down all of your yarn and you're gonna go ahead and pick up your anchor yarn, lay it on the inside. So we're laying it in between our two looms And then you can take your tapestry needle and let it go down in between there. There's, there's a couple ways you can do it, but I just make sure that it's in between my first and last peg. Okay. Put this one on here. And then you're gonna go ahead and wrap a second round of the stockinette to complete the cast on. So go ahead and do that. And you can tie these together in a knot if you like. Okay, so I've got the anchor yarn on there. Gonna pick up and go around the outside of peg one and the inside peg one outside inside all the way around okay pause your video and I will see you back at the next moment see you soon okay so go ahead and knit over all of your stitches uh, I have it doesn't matter which direction you go in I've actually already knitted over all the inside loom uh, stitches so go ahead and knit over uh, both the inside and outside and then when you have done that Go ahead and click on your counter that you are on row one because you will be ready and set up for row one, okay, or round one. All right, uh, go ahead and do that and pause your video. I will meet you in a moment. See you soon. Round one, we are going to set up for the chunky open rib stitch brim. Beginning with peg two, you're going to move every other loop on peg two two over to one. So you're moving in pairs. So you're moving uh, in the next pair of pegs. Uh, it's technically four onto three. So all of the evens are moving on to the odds. That's it. It's just on the outside loom. And when you get that finished, uh, well, I'll show you how to wrap it. It's going to be wrapped twice for this round. All right, so pause your video and I will see you in a moment. All right, we'll start our wrapping. And just a note for uh, this hat, give yourself a little bit of a looseness, not too much, uh, and kind of hold on to that first stitch when you start first start wrapping your round. Otherwise, it will pull too tightly 
between the rounds and it'll look like you have a seam in your hat and we want to make it look nice and consistent uh, even tension so give it a little bit of some extra yarn there and we're going to start with the outside wrapping of peg one then we're going to jump to the inside loom of peg three okay and then we're going to go to the outside loom of peg three so we're working with the inside of one number and then go jump to the same number on the outside and we're picking up every other peg and we're skipping the ones on the front and the back uh, skipping the ones that are uh, empty okay so just pick these up so good this is five we're going to the inside seven outside seven inside nine outside nine inside eleven outside eleven and you don't really have to pick up on the numbers you just keep going all right, so pause your video when you get to the beginning of that round. Uh, we'll come back and I'll show you how to um, get the next wrap done for this round. See you in a moment. Okay, we need to do our second wrapping for round one. We have finished on the second to last pegs of the outside and now we're going to go to the very first inside peg. So inside loom peg one and now we're going to peg one again. Now all the outside pegs are going to get uh, one more wrap on them. So they're all going to look like they have four loops on them. And then now we're going to pick up all the missed or skipped pegs on the inside loom. So the inside, they only have one wrapping on them, okay, that we're doing right now. And then the outside will have the two. So on the outside, it'll look like four loops. And on the inside, it will look like two loops total, okay? So we did inside one, outside one, inside two, outside three, inside four, outside five, and so on. Now you're just picking up every other one and continuing, okay? So when you finish this round, you're just going to uh, lift over the bottom two over the top two on the uh, outside and then on the inside you're going to knit uh, one over one okay so go ahead and continue doing that round uh, click your row counter and we'll be in uh, next with round two see you soon all right round two you're simply going to be repeating the same as round one you're going to make a total of six rounds for this ribbing so uh, you're going to go ahead and do that pause your video and meet me back up when you're ready to set up for brioche uh, just to remind you how we started off round one you go around the outside of peg one go to the inside of peg three pick up on peg three on the outside and so on and when you get back to the very beginning your uh, last peg will be here on the second to last peg and then you're going to want to pick up the inside of one first before going to the outside of one again and then go to two and then it's just every other one um, all the way across remember to skip these empty pegs in the front okay knitting two over one in the front and one over one in the inside I say front, I mean outside, <laughs> same thing. All right, uh, go ahead and make your repeated rounds and I will meet you back up when you are ready to uh, get ready for the brioche section. See you soon. We're onto the hat body and we're on round seven, but before we can begin that, we need to move some stitches over. So we have two loops on each outside peg uh, that are odd. So we're gonna take peg one uh, the top loop and move it over to peg two just like that so all of the top loops on the odd numbers are going to move to the evens okay so do that and then after you do that you're going to wrap it in stuck and knit same as you've done before on our cast on we just go around one go up to one outside of two inside of two, outside three, inside three, and so on, all the way around. And then you're just going to knit one over one on the outside and the inside loom. That's it for round seven. So go ahead and finish moving them over first, wrap it for stock and knit, knit over, and we'll meet you for round eight. See you in a moment. Round eight, we're gonna work with color B. And just go ahead and leave A in between our last peg and our first peg, just loosely there. Go ahead and make a slip knot and put it on the outside peg one. And just leave your tail um, 
you can you can lay it on the inside here but really just kind of lay it towards the back and you can weave this in later I, I find that it's easier to do that so um, you're going to start uh, wrapping in the stockinette again so you're going from one to one two to two so outside to inside first and so on and when we get to um, this the end of this round uh, you're going to knit over only the inside pegs okay so the inside loops so you're going to have one of each color and you're going to knit the bottom loop over the top loop and that's it so I'll pause your video meet me back up for round nine see you soon all right so round eight we have only worked the inside stitches knitting them over and so what we're left with is one of each color on the outside now all of your brioche uh, rounds are going to be the same so next time when you get to uh, this repeated round round eight is going to get repeated again except you're going to be knitting the bottom two over one so uh, let's show you what round nine does you're going to grab yarn a and put it up to the top here and I like to bring it underneath uh, this B okay just pull it up underneath make sure it's uh, looser to start with not not too loose but not tight either so I just kind of hold it and we're going to go ahead and wrap that in stock and net okay so uh, I want you to notice something here so I'm pushing them down with my finger as I go it's just kind of a nice little technique to start you off with and it gets those stitches pushed down uh, what's going to happen is we're going to be knitting over the bottom two loops like this over the top one loop at the end of this round so you can go ahead and um, wrap that and knit over and uh, I want to talk to you about when you do knit over notice how when I lift this up and over that uh, gray loop is going to remain on top and it sort of covers this red loop that's how you get the brioche stitch to happen like it does you're, you're getting the um, you're knitting every other round where um, one color is going your main color whatever that is the main color for the outside or the inside is going to be on the bottom and then the secondary color is going to be in the middle so whatever color is going to be dominant on that side that color will be on the bottom and the top when you're knitting over so you'll see when uh, we'll come back and do a round 10 which is that it's a repeated round eight I'll show you what that looks like so go ahead and wrap this around on the outside only knit the bottom two loops over the top and uh, meet you back for the next round see you soon rounds 10 through 23 you're going to be repeating rounds 8 and 9 seven times so seven times they get repeated um, keep in mind that's two rounds of each of those so seven so it's actually 14 rounds that you're doing um, that many times now if you uh, want to think about it this way you're really knitting I know it, it's kind of funny but because you're only knitting half the stitches over on one color and half the stitches over on the other color it takes those two to make a complete round when you actually look at your knitting so anytime on the outside of your knitting later on whenever you see one stitch here that actually represents two physical rounds of wrapping each color I hope that makes sense but that's basically what we're doing so um, a couple little tips before you continue on uh, if you want to make sure like this this stitch by the way when you're wrapping the outside ones um, this last stitch is going to be loose because you can't technically knit it over yet so um, when you begin your next round make sure it's still wrapped around here that's a little troubleshooting thing so make sure it's still wrapped and then if you want to lock it in you can move your um, other color on top of it before you begin the next one and again make sure it's started nice and loose but the other thing is you might start getting your yarn um, uh, twisted around itself so it's a good idea to take one of your balls and uh, one of your skeins and put it in the middle here so that it doesn't really interfere with the other one and continue to be twisty I'm not going to show that on the video here because it might look a little bit um, it might look a little messy on film but that just know that you might have to do some some management of your uh, your skeins or your balls of yarn okay so go ahead and wrap around uh, round uh, 10 is just like round 8 except your um, once you've got uh, those stitches on you'll see that you only have 
one over one in the front, which means don't do anything. And so when you see three loops on one side, that means that's the round that you're knitting over. And you see how you've got a red on the bottom, red on the top, and the middle is the uh, color A or gray. Uh, when you knit over the bottom two over the top, it's going to have that primary, primary color uh, seen on that side. So when we look from the front here, if you can see inside my stitches, you can't see the um, red when we knit both over, okay? It's hiding inside, okay? So go ahead and repeat those rounds. Make sure you're using your counter and uh, your row counter and counting those up. Pause your video and we'll see you at the end. Make sure, uh, oh, and when you get to round 23, your repeated row that has your um, your worked color A, make sure you do it uh, kind of nice and loose because we are going to be moving some stitches around. So I've got that written in the pattern, uh, but I want to make sure and tell you right now. Okay, go ahead and wrap those around and continue. We'll see you in a moment. Oh, I do want to pause and show you this because this is a troubleshooting moment. If you find when you're knitting over, um, you're, you know, you're loose and you're not like immediately pushing these stitches down, you might find later on that you've accidentally let one stitch kind of fall this way or even both of them. And then in a few more rounds, you might notice, oh my goodness, I have way more than three stitches back here. Uh, or say maybe you skipped them and you kept going. <laughs> And then you wrap your next few rounds and you're like, what do I do with this? <laughs> it's, it's harder to frog on this project. It's harder to kind of rip out and go back because it's like every other round has worked. So um, do your best to look and inspect your work after you knit over that round. Just go back through and push everything down and make sure you only have one loop remaining on there because uh, it's just going to be so much easier. If you do find that, say, say you got this one knit over, Okay, and and that's the one that's left and then you wrap the next round or so you may have to kind of pull up the first few tops of your stitches and then get this one knit back over this one and then put those other ones on there. So if you end up having five on there, you're going to have to kind of do some messing around. You may have to have another loom tool or frog backwards a few rounds. So that means you have to unknit everything very carefully. So I suggest um, just really inspecting your work before you move on to the next round. Okay. So I just wanted you to see how loose mine are when I pop them over like this. And then sometimes I get kind of lazy and then I just do something like that. And then because I'm going fast and see what happens. So just kind of guide them back and then do that maybe every, uh, I don't know, 10 or 12 stitches you've got. All right, okay, I promise. So go ahead and do all your repeated rounds. Make sure that round 23 is um, nice and loose if you can. If not, no worries, it just, it'll just it just be a little bit tight when you start moving the stitches around. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, you have made it to Cable Twist Brioche 1 starts on peg two. This is round 24 or it's round 52 if you have uh, done the second brioche and then you need to rewind and come back to this part. So it's done the same way. You've knit your last uh, odd round and it was in color A and we need to actually twist and set it up right before you can actually wrap in color B. So um, even though it says round 24 and even rows are not the same as color A, it's just because we're just moving stitches around that we've already uh, worked. Okay, we've already knit them over. All right, so um, these are our instructions right here. If you're on a left-handed video, I'm going to say rights and lefts, and you're just going to do what I do on the screen, but it's the opposite word for you. I'll try not to use those words, but that's how the instructions are written. Okay, all right, so uh, let's, I'm going to refer to this off to the side, so I just want you to know about that. Let's start our color A setup twist. We're moving outside loom peg stitches only. We're skipping peg one. That's the marked peg one here. Let me just tilt this so you can see this really well. And we're going to start working with pegs two and three. That's where I've got this stitch marker around these two pegs here, okay? This is the only time we're gonna say peg numbers because then it would get confusing. So you're going to look at these as a pair of pegs and you're going to pick up the one on the right. So you're skipping the very first of your pair. You're picking up the second one. Now with your loom tool, leave it on there. I'm gonna put my finger on this loop to keep it here. And now I'm going to scoop up the other one of the pair. 
So we have our one on the left, okay? And then is, or the one that we had skipped first. Now we're gonna place it on this one on the right over here, drop it off without losing our first stitch on our tool and then place the stitch on this left peg. So it's moving the stitches and this one's on the bottom over here and this one is on the top over here. So now we're gonna move over to the next set and um, you're working in pairs again. So you're gonna pick this one up first, pick up the one you skipped, place the one you skipped on the other peg and then place your held stitch onto the uh, one before. Okay, so here we go. Work next pair. I'm going to move it like this so you can see how they're twisted. So we're picking up the second one then we pick up the first one, move the first one onto the second and move the second onto the first. This is the only time that me saying the numbers works because when you're in the very first pair, you're on peg three and four or two and three, and that would be really confusing. So, okay, so you just keep going. Okay, we're picking up the one on the right or the peg two, pick up peg one, place one on two, and two on one, okay? All right, so continue doing that all the way around and then uh, when we meet back up, we will actually begin the special wrapping technique for round 24. All right, see you in a moment. We have one last part to twist, which I did not say a while ago. Um, just go ahead and pick up your loose yarns for wrapping and move them to the back a little bit. And you're going to twist the first peg on your loom and the very last one. So you do the same lifting technique. We're gonna lift over peg one and then the last peg put the last peg on peg one and peg one on the last peg okay so now it's ready I'm gonna tighten that up put my yarn in between my last peg and my first peg and I'm ready to start round 24 wrapping technique we are ready to twist with color B First, you're gonna start off by wrapping around pegs one on the outside and then inside. And then now you need to look at starting at pegs two and three where we've got our stitch markers on. We're going to work with these pairs of pegs uh, in the on the outside and inside. So uh, this set and this set, all of these together. And uh, I'm gonna say lefts and rights and then I'll do it another way um, for the people who are doing the uh, other handed video. So we're going to skip this peg on the left and we're going on the outside. We're gonna go outside right and then go up to the inside left and then outside left and inside right. Let's do that again. Skip the peg, go to the next peg on the outside, go up to the inside uh, left peg down left peg on the outside and then up again to the outside peg on the right okay if you're going clockwise then you're going to go to the outside peg two inside one outside one inside two let's do that again outside two inside one outside one inside two okay so once you get this wrapping technique, it's going to be fast. You can pause uh, your video or slow it down if you need to, uh, but this is how the wrapping technique goes and we do have it all outlined in the written pattern. So uh, after you get all the way around to the other side, uh, you've got a couple of pegs left and I need to show you what to do there because there is a little bit of a change on this particular wrap. Okay, so continue wrapping and meet me at the last couple of pegs. We'll see you in a moment. Okay, so you have these last couple of pegs left. You're gonna go around the outside one first and then the inside one, that's the very last peg. And then go ahead and move your yarn out here and you can hold on to it to give it a little bit of attention. And then, well, a little bit of tension, not attention. <laughs> well, either one. Uh, and so you're going to pick up um, the first peg here from our very beginner starter peg. And then go ahead and pick up the last peg. And then you can replace it. Um, put it. Put the last peg one on the first and the first on the last. 
And so now all of your stitches are all set up and twisted and they are matching up with the twists that were below. So you are finished wrapping around 24. And if you're on the second time you do this brioche, um, the brioche one, it's the same thing too. So you're going to go ahead and knit over the bottom two loops over the top two loops and get those uh, stitches uh, worked. Uh, finish that round, uh, pause your video, and I will meet you back for round 25. We'll see you soon. We're gonna do a color A round with stock and knit brioche here. So just go around one to one and go back to your pattern again. So go ahead and work round 25. Pause your video and I'll meet you back for 26. Remember that you're going to knit over the bottom two loops on the outside loom only. See you soon. All right, so you've finished round 25. You are on 26 starting and you're gonna start with color B and work those inside stitches and then jump over and work round 27 with color A. Now you're gonna repeat rounds 26 and 27 five more times after that and we'll be ending on 37 with a color A and get ready to start our brioche section. So remember you have to do that loose. So um, this has five times right here, plus you know those other two. So really it's six rounds of each color, working those and uh, then we'll end on that color A. So uh, pause your video, I'll meet you back after you've completed 37 and we'll start twisting up for the second brioche section. See you soon. Okay, so we have finished round 37 and we're on color A. We've already knitted over and we're starting cable twist brioche number two. This starts on peg one. So unlike the other one, we're actually starting on pegs one and two. So it's a little bit easier to describe here, but it's the same sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to move the stitches over here. I just wanted to show you where it is on your uh, on your pattern here. This is the only time we're going to be working out on these pegs and it's actually easier than the first time. So let's do this now. Okay, to set up, you're still going to be moving uh, the color A first before you actually start wrapping uh, 38. So go ahead and um, we're gonna concentrate on pegs one and two. We're working in those pairs where we're just twisting. So we're picking up with uh, on our on our uh, peg two, we're picking up our right stitch and holding it on our tool and picking up our left stitch or our peg one, and then we're placing one on the peg two, which is the right one, and putting the other one on the empty peg. Okay, so we just twisted those. Same thing again. Pick up, uh, so skip one stitch, pick up the next stitch, then pick up the one we skipped, move the one that we just put on there onto the other peg and twist by placing the first one we picked up on the empty peg. I know, hopefully you understood that, but <laughs> you did it earlier, so you should be good. So go ahead and complete this one and then we'll do the wrapping technique on the next part. So pause your video and we'll see you soon. Okay, we're ready to wrap the round 38 and it's, similar to what we did before, but we don't have to skip any pegs. So when we begin with our first a set of four here, the two in the front and two in the back, uh, we're gonna end the same way. So there's no moving extra things. So um, again, what you do is you just start by um, skipping that very first peg on the outside, going to the next one, okay, the one on the right, and then go to the um, very first peg in the back or on the inside loom and then now go to the outside loom on the front first peg and then go to the inside loom on the second peg. So you've got that crisscross like before. Again, it's covering up the, um, the twisted stitches from the previous row that you just uh, did. So you can just follow where they lay and go around. So you should have that. If you need a slower reminder, you can go back uh, to where we were setting up for brioche uh, one and see how they individually wrap if you need a slower part of the video. So uh, keep wrapping those and then you're going to knit two over one on the inside. Pause your video and I will see you at the next step. See you soon. You should be finished with round 38. Everything's still looking crisscrossed and you're gonna pick up 
uh, A again and start working 39, wrapping it uh, back in the stockinette again. So uh, that is uh, back to the stockinette for the brioche for several rounds. So I'm gonna grab my pattern and let's look at this together. You're on round 39. You're gonna do 39 to 51, just like you did with rounds 25 through 37 before. So you work 39 and then you do uh, with it's kind of tight where you're knitting over those cables and then 40 and 41 are just repeating B and A, B and A. And then you end up on an A um, after you've repeated um, all of these rounds uh, where you've got six colors of each of them. Okay, so 42 through 51 is the five times repeating 40 and 41. Okay, just like before. Okay, so when you're done with that, um, go ahead and meet me again and I'll talk about uh, the uh, upcoming brioche section again. Pause your video and I will see you there. Okay, so you should have completed round 51 and you're ready to start this uh, Cable Twist Brioche 1 that starts on peg 2 again, like you did back on round uh, 24 <laughs> back here, okay? Uh, it's very much the same. It's just that the round numbers appear different. And then after you do your moving of stitches, then doing your wrapped pegs, you do a stuck in net round in A, a stuck in it round in B, go and do A again, and then you have a number of repeats. So when we did this other one, we had um, five times repeating rounds 26 and 27, but this time, let me jump back over. Uh, this one, after you do all those things, then we're gonna be repeating uh, 54 and 55, but only four times, and so, you're only going to be repeating each color down at this point five times each, okay? Because there's these two and then plus these four. Okay, so if you do one extra and you repeat this section as before, like if you rewind or hit that chapter button to see the video again, um, it's fine if you've got uh, an extra couple of rounds in there. Just make sure that you end on a color A, okay? All right, and then we're going to jump over to the next page and start shaping the crown. So go ahead and work that section and pause your video when you're ready to start the decrease. We'll see you soon. And we're on to the shaping of the top or the crown. This is what my knitting looks like. You can see clearly your brim, your uh, first section of brioche, the uh, first time we twist the brioche, the second time, and then we go back to the first and now it's coming on through and again if you did that stocking net up top after that twist you only go um, uh, well you go one less round of that extra brioche after the twist than you did uh, this time down here it don't worry about it if you uh, have gone one extra round that's okay all right so I'm ready to set up round uh, 64 so we're going to work the outside of the loom moving some pegs inward or some stitches inward uh, to decrease on the front and then we're going to go on the inside and move some over so let's do the outside part first so you're going to take all the even pegs pegs two and move them on to peg one peg four will go on to peg three and so on so move all the even number of pegs to the odd just the outside loom and go ahead and work that while your video is paused and when you're ready come back and meet me for the inside see you in a moment okay so we finished the outside of the loom we need to do the inside loom and we're going to be working in pairs again you're going to pick up the first peg on the inside loom or the first stitch on top you're going to have two colors color a is on the top and color b is on the bottom Okay, so what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna push this back here just for now uh, so you can see it. We're gonna be picking up both of these stitches on peg two and place them onto peg one, okay? And then take that loop that you picked up, this one here, and then place it back on peg one. So what happens is you have them stacked where two of the same color are on top and two of the same color are down below. And uh, that's it. So let me turn around and do it this direction so you can see it from here. So you're just gonna be picking up this one. If you want, you can set it to the side on that empty peg. Pick these two up, put it on 
this peg here. So you've got two of color B, one of A, and then pick the other A up on that empty peg and move it over. So now you have, let's turn it around. Now you have both of uh, pegs two on the outside and the inside loom empty, okay? And you have uh, peg four empty. So all of your odd ones are going to have two loops on the outside and four loops on the inside loom. So go ahead and repeat that all the way around. Uh, pause your video and we'll see you there. There are now 26 pairs of pegs with loops. We had 52, now we're down to half that number. All the even pegs are empty and they will remain empty for the remainder of the pattern. So the uh, next step is round 64 and we're going to take color B and we're going to wrap it around in stockinette stitch. So we're gonna wrap around peg one on the outside, one on the inside, skip the even, go to three on the outside, three on the inside, and back and forth. So I don't call out skipping the pegs, it's just that we're ignoring all of those empty ones for the remainder of the pattern. So you're just gonna continue going around, don't pick up any new pegs, just the ones that have uh, the loops on them, okay? Go ahead and wrap that. Pause your video as you need. Okay, so we have all the pegs wrapped, and because we are on the um, color B row, we need to knit over the inside of the loom. So we just spin this around so we can see. And this is where we're going to be knitting. This is the only time we're doing this kind of thing. We're knitting four loops over the top one loop. Oh, that jumped off. Okay, hold on. Let's put that back on. There we go. May need to hold that on there. So I'm going to knit over two loops over that red, that A over red, and then I'm going to knit the B over the A. Okay. So now we have one loop on this peg and go ahead and go around all of them. If you need to um, pull on the uh, color A yarn to get these uh, last ones tight again. There we go, it's all locked into place. Go ahead and do that, pause your video, and I will see you at the end of that round. We just finished round 64, We're round to 65. We're just going to work with color A. Same stock in that, that we just did, wrapping A around every other stitch, starting with the outside of one, inside of one, outside of three, inside of three, all the way around. So go ahead and wrap that, and then this time you are knitting three loops over one. You're knitting the bottom two on the outside uh, over the top one here, okay? So go ahead and work all the way around, knit these over, and we'll see you at round 66. See you in a moment. All right, we are ready for round 66, and we're wrapping color B just as we did before, but this time we're working on the inside loom, two loops over one, just as we've done with other stock and net previous rounds to get that brioche stitch. So we're going outside of one, inside one, outside one, uh, three, inside three, and so on. And do what you've done before, and you're knitting over just the inside only. So um, you're going to do uh, 66 with the red or the color B, and then you're going to do uh, 68 with uh, color A, and then um, you're going to repeat those two rounds two more times. So really you're doing um, six rounds, three of each color. So um, 66, 67, and then 68, 69, 70, 71. So that's six rounds working those colors. And when you get to that point, um, we'll meet you back and we'll uh, finish this uh, top of this hat off. All right. Pause your video and we'll see you in a moment. All right, you've finished with round 71 and we have one loop on the outside loom and we have two uh, loops on the inside loom. So now you're just going to knit over all of the inside loom stitches so that you have one peg remaining or one loop remaining, which is color A. Okay, so go ahead and do that. And once you've uh, completed that step, you can pause if you need to, and then uh, when you've completed that step, you're going to take all of the loops uh, from the inside loom and put them on the outside loom. 
Okay, so we're going from 26 loops on each loom to only 26 loops on the outside loom. So uh, after you finish messing with this uh, last of the round, if you're following along with me, go ahead and let me spin it around here. Go ahead and cut color B. You can leave about a six to nine inch tail and you just throw it on the inside of that loom. Just let it hang. And now you can move all the loops that we just talked about. So inside loop one goes to inside loop one. Inside loop uh, three goes to, in, uh, or, I'm sorry, outside loop. Ah, I said that funny. <laughs> all the inside loops to the outside directly across. Okay, uh, go ahead and do that. Pause your video and I'll meet you for the next step. See you in a moment. After you've moved all the loops over, you should have two on every other peg and now you can just knit those over. Okay, so this will be the very top of your hat and then you can cut a long 12 inch tail and then this is going to get woven into the top of your hat. You're just going to take your tapestry needle and pull it through each one of these stitches all the way around and take it off as you go. And of course you can use your loom tool, pull it on through like this all the way, and then you take it off. So you could knit these over and do this all at the same time, just kind of like a I think it's just kind of a quicker way to do it. Now, um, this is going to leave uh, a little bit larger of a circle on the inside of the opposite color when you turn it on the reverse, if you want this a reversed hat. And I'll show you what this looks like uh, afterward. Uh, or you could leave these two loops on here and then go through both loop. It loops. It just means that you're gonna have a bulkier um, uh, part to cinch around uh, in the end. So I, I like doing, um, and I just did that in front of you like I'm like I'm not doing it. Let me do this over. I'm knitting it over. I like knitting this over and then pulling it through because I only want 26 loops going around that very center circle of the hat. Let me show you my red one here. You can see what I mean. See this top here? So there's 26 loops around here, but if you had 52, it would be bulkier. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and pull it off and show you uh, the um, finishing techniques. We'll see you in a moment. So this is what mine looks like coming off of the loom. And I just got on that last stitch. I just pulled it through. Just gently pull it off. And then you want to gently, you can see that, actually this is a really great shot. You can see it before I pull it, you can see what that looks like. It would actually make a really pretty cowl if you <laughs> wanted to finish it maybe with uh, something like this. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll just take this and pull it up. Okay. And then you can see how uh, this is like nice and kind of thinned out so it's not just an, a massive amount of stitches here. So just pull that tight and before you over tighten it, put it back through your tapestry needle here and you can run uh, through all the stitches. I'm just gonna go on the inside. Oops, I didn't mean to hit my camera there. I'm just gonna put that on through, flip it over and you can very clearly see where to go through again. So it looks like I'm coming through this stitch here from this direction. So we're going to continue going in that direction there. Hmm. Why do I have a, for some reason I have a red, a red piece. I'm trying to think of why I have that there. Okay. It's not showing up. <laughs> I figured, you know what? I'm going to inspect that before I uh, tighten that up too much. Okay, so I'm just going to continue by going on through these other stitches one more time, all the way around. I'm, I'm going to ignore that red one so that it doesn't get picked up. Hopefully I'm staying on camera here. 
So I'm not super tight just yet because I want to make sure and get through all of these stitches. It's going to be more secure to go around it twice. All right, so now we can pull it up securely, nice and tight. And then I like to go around a couple of these stitches and make a loop. And then pull my tail through that loop and make it secure. Tighten that up and make another one, another knot. I'm going through another few stitches, pulling through until there's a loop left and then go through that loop and pull it tight. And then we'll go ahead and trim our yarn here. And then you can go ahead and trim the uh, tail for your inside brioche. This is what it looks like when it's uh, inside out. You've got the nice straight brioche. It has a, a bit of a, a character to it when it's pulled apart, um, but it's you know a nice a nice patterning uh, to it. So it's mostly like a regular brioche. And then uh, we'll just pull our um, tail here, get our tapestry needle, and weave it in. And if you were going to put a pom pom or something on this, you can weave in your tails here, or you can weave them in uh, through these remaining top of these stitches here. They're a little bit loose of a stitch to follow my um, little uh, stitch pattern way of um, the way I usually will go through ribbing is I kind of go around these stitches, but they're too loose to do that. So they're not going to hide very well. So I would just go around the top part. Whoops. I keep hitting that camera. I'm so sorry. I just keep going around the top part and then um, you can kind of go back around them again, just go up and around another stitch so that you're not going all in the same direction. And then that way your yarn gets woven in. And I tend to want to split some of these yarns. And make sure you're not skipping over too many of them or it'll bunch up wrong. Okay. And then I'm just going to tie it off at one of these and knot it. Here we go. Back through a loop there. And one more time. And back through a loop there. Okay, and no one's going to see these, especially if you end up putting a removable pom-pom on the inside of the hat. And then where you had added the other strand in the very beginning, you're going to do the same kind of thing. Just weave up uh, into uh, this, this column right here, just loosely and carefully, just kind of follow the looseness of the stitch. All right, so um, grab a crochet hook and we are going to um, finish off the uh, cast on edge and uh, anchor yarn right here. All right, to bind off at the anchor yarn, we're going to go to the beginning where we see our contrasting anchor yarn. You've got your tail from the uh, beginning slip knot, and we're going to look at this first rib here. Come down, and you see four loops. So we're going to avoid the one that has the tail and go to the very next loop here, and you can pull it out or use your tapestry needle if it's a little too tight. Going to pick up one and then two stitches, just the ones that are around that contrasting anchor yarn. And then you're just going to loop one through the other, just like that. And go through the next one. Uh, let's see. There we go. And then loop that bottom over top there. And the next one and so on, and just continue all the way around the entire brim, and uh, pause your video, and I will see you uh, at the uh, beginning strand. See you soon. All right, so I have done most of these stitches. I'm down to what looks like the last three. It almost looked like one, but uh, I had to separate between where I thought that the last stitch was, um, because there's actually two here. So um, I'm just pulling on my anchor yarn. You can also do that where you just pull on two of them and go in like that. 
and pull on through and then I have one more It looks like maybe I had two more there and they were just really tight. Okay, so once I've got the last loop through and I know I've got all of them, uh, I can go ahead and pull through my tail. Okay. And then I need to connect these two pieces, but before we do that, go ahead and cut your anchor yarn and just gently pull it on through. There we go. You can see it's nice and stretchy, has a great edge. You can kind of pull this out and get it to relax. This is just the ribbing relaxing because it's just been stretched on that loom for so long. So just kind of go around a few times till it pulls into uh, more of the natural closing. And then take my tapestry needle, thread it on through, and I'm just going to connect these ends. So I'm going to go on the outside here underneath two of these stitches and do a figure eight and come back to the outside over here and come through these two stitches and pull it together. And then now I'm just going to kind of come through one of these stitches here and come back through the inside and it's now closed up and we'll just flip it inside out. And then how I like to um, weave in the tails on the ribbing is I just go on the outside of one of these columns here. And I like this bent tapestry needle because I go around the outside of this column and then whip around the outside of that stitch and keep going around and behind and up through the middle, around, behind, and up through the middle. And just keep whipping it around that way pull through. I got one stitch left up top and then I can go around that stitch and come back down. So just kind of turn it over so you can see it a little bit better. And then I can come through this stitch here and go through a few more stitches and even go through. Oops. and go through the middle of these two and come back and then go up a few more and trim my yarn. And here we have our finished hat. Isn't that lovely? Here is the inside of your brioche hat. It's nice and straight and then the outside has the cables and here is the top of your hat. You could put on a fun little um, felt button in uh, an accent color or um, the red. You could do a nice soft pom-pom, just kind of loose pom-pom and tie it on uh, temporarily so you can untie it or put it on with a removable button. But I love the main part, which is the cabled hat. So beautiful and comfy too. And if you want for Christmas or the holidays, you can make it and green and <laughs> green and red. Isn't that fun? Any color you want, pick your accent, have fun. Be sure and tag me at Goodnit Kisses on Instagram. I'd love to see yours. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.